Oops. All right. Uh, we are broadcasting now, you guys. Hello. Hi. I am Greg Tito, Editor-in-Chief of The Escapist. Good to see you. I am here with some lovely gentlemen, and we will be playing Civilization Beyond Earth uh, from Freak for Axis Games in a multiplayer showdown uh, between some various fun-loving people. And it's going to be awesome. Uh, so go ahead and sound off, you guys, on, uh, on who's playing who, uh, and, uh, you know, talk about your general choices and how much you little, how little you all know about this game and how I'm, uh, me and Josh are going to school you. All right, well, the, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. I'm, uh, oh, looks like Josh already disconnected. Nice. Oh, um, that's not good. All right, so uh, I'm totally new to this. Um, my choices were just... They're, they were random, but I made choices. So it <laughs> should, uh, should be interesting. And already uh, my first unit has died because I decided to attack something that already killed me. So that should be fun. <laughs> you already tried to attack something? Oh, no. That's not going to end well. Yeah. Um, actually, you know what, guys? Before we go any farther, I'm going to actually back out and try to get uh, Josh Vanderwall back in. Good. I can get my unit back. So you can get your unit back. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, he just IM'd me to say everything crashed. Everything cr Oh, so is he rebooting <laughs> right now? Yeah, he's rebooting right now. Um, all right. I am going to uh, exit the main menu, and then we'll just have to join up again and make all of your identical choices again. Then I can explain them a little bit better. Yeah. Do do do. Okay, so this is how uh, multiplayer works uh, here in uh, Beyond Earth. You basically have a whole bunch. Of, if you're hosting the game, you have a mo lots of choices. Um, I liked to go with. Uh, I went with Lush because uh, it's a little bit easier, and uh, uh, quick speed is good because that way we get to. Um, the good, you know, quote unquote, good units quicker, uh, and don't get bogged down so much in um, other things. You know, we're gonna try that out. Maybe in, in a five-player game, having some more time before we come to a head would be a good thing. So we'll we'll, we'll test it out here and see how it goes. Uh, but I'm gonna click the host game um, and get everybody uh, going here. Ah, so here is Matacor, which I believe is John Bolding. I'm gonna make. Yeah, that's me. Hi, John. John is actually playing from my actual office, uh, which I was nice enough to clean for him, so you're welcome. Yeah, it's like really shockingly clean in here, actually. I used like cleaning products and everything. Is that why I'm getting a little, a little secondary high right now? From <laughs> no, that, that's from the actual thing you're smoking. That's the secret, don't tell me about it. So it's interesting, actually, in the way that this works... Uh, in the multiplayer game is you get to see everyone's choices. Yeah, I'm wondering if I should just copy you. Uh, you seem to know what you're doing. I, 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 I do not... I mean, I know how to play against the AI with this, but I have no idea how to... Uh, and, and that's not letting me do anything with the, with the open things here, which is upsetting to me. So maybe we'll just do us. So go ahead and click those green arrows once you're done with all your choices. Here's a valuable question. Um... Are there naval units in Beyond Earth? Yes, they are. Uh, and John, just as an FYI, your thing is still going out. Uh, so do the microphone thing if you can. Uh, yes, there's naval units. There's there's just two basic units. There's um, uh, a gunboat, uh, which is your offensive uh, ranged unit, and then there's a uh, carrier unit, uh, which carries uh, aircraft. And none of them are melee units in that case, so that they don't actually cannot take over cities like they could in uh, Brave New World, the last expansion for Civilization V, so let that be known. I played a little bit of Civ V, but I was a lot more into Civ IV, so this is still going to be uh, interesting. Yeah, actually, I didn't even realize that, uh, Mr. Kiefer. It is going to be very much different. Go ahead and hit the green arrow, uh, John Bolding. You mean the check mark? Yes. Arrow, check mark. Different shapes. Bolding, are you dead? 
No, I... I gave him a headset. He's going to try to see if it fixes the audio. Yeah, hopefully this fixes the audio for you it's guys. Not the he it's not a headset. It's the microphone itself. But no, no I gave him a headset. To oh, to, to use the microphone the on the headset. Yes, yes. All right, well, as long as you can just click the arrow, then we can start the loading process here. And I'll, otherwise, I won't have to keep kicking people out of the of this open thing. How about this? Oh, you got it. The game is starting in four, three. Oh, my God. So my choice process was to pick ones that sounded nice that no one else had picked. That's That's a valid choice. I picked the I picked the uh, organization that basically gave me mention this bastard. And, and I and I support that as well. Uh, there there are no bad choices, only bad people in Civilization Beyond Earth. <laughs> okay. I'm going for as much production as possible because I have no idea. I'm going to try to build my way out of any problems. That's no, generally I'm, a good thing. Uh, I won't so attack anything this time. In the opening of Beyond Earth, I mean, you guys will be definitely be seeing my game, but we'll get uh, the uh, audio, of course, from people describing what's happening in their game. Uh, so that will be fun. Uh, but here, you get to you get to choose where your uh, your city lands. Uh, and here, I am uh, Hutama, or uh, from Polystralia, which is basically Polynesia and Australia together in one. Hanging out. Hanging out, being cool together, even though it's mostly just Australia. <laughs> How do we end our turn? You have to uh, finish all your choices, and then there will be a green arrow in the bottom right, which will say, end turn. Uh, and, of course, here's the tech web um, that uh, oh, you guys God, can the tech web. <laughs> There's a lot on. to read here. Uh, so for those of you guys who are just trying out, choosing pioneering is probably your best bet early on. Uh, because it's it's the uh, uh, thing that allows you to build colonists, trade depots. Trade is very important in uh, Beyond Earth, uh, which we'll get to later once we uh, finally get a, a unit. Uh, Josh Vanderwall, are you? Are you, I haven't heard you from you. Are you still? Are you on here? Are you on the call? Do you need an extra invite? Uh, no, I'm here. Okay, good. Um, Still no idea what just happened. Uh, Chrome crashed, then simultaneously Civ crashed, and everything went to shit. So if that happens again, uh, I'm going to kick my computer out the door, so uh, you can keep on going without me. Oh, man. If only we had video of you doing, like, office space level crap on uh, on your thing, on, on your computer, that'd be awesome. Uh, so hi to everybody in the chat. Hi, uh, Vivian Tar and uh, King Red Bad and Mame Dan. Hey, how you guys doing? Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we are trying something new with a different uh, uh, video from each of us uh, in uh, this huge multiplayer stream. So let us know how, what you think. Here's a question. Sure. Can you queue up multiple techs? Yes. Just step five. Okay, you can. Yeah, you just click farther along in the thing and it will uh, do all your prerequisites ahead of time. Oh, good. I should do that. Yeah. Oh, nice. So that does carry over from Civ 4. Yes. Where's the research? How do I get to the research screen? <laughs> uh, the the up upper left, there's a... Uh, uh, I found it, I found it. It says, you know, like, for me it says pioneering, but, you know, all of your cues for making decisions will be in your bottom right. And I'm going to do a thing where multiplayer auto end turn, and you, I suggest you guys do the same thing. Where is that? It's in options, which is the three uh, horizontal lines in the upper right. And then in game options, uh, the tab that says game options, there's a, a, a checkbox that says multiplayer auto end turn, which generally, if you're not in a war, um, is, is good to do just because it's you, you. How many times do you not, for, you know, you forget to click the end turn button? And then all of a sudden we're all waiting for you to enter and then the game just slows down. It's terrible. Uh, all right, so it looks like I got a resource pod here. That's good. Uh, and uh, those are similar to the barbarian huts or the ancient ruins in Civ Five, um, and the resource pods in Alpha Centauri in that, uh, you know, whatever ships that you had sent or any probe that you had sent to this planet um, previously dropped some things, so there are always, you know, little things that you can get up. And also, uh, I've encountered my first alien nest. 
which is not very far, only about five tiles away from my capital. Um, and if you've read anything about Civ Five, you'll know, all right, Civ Five, of Civ Beyond Earth, uh, that the aliens are kind of a bitch and uh, do not engage is my advice to all you guys, especially early on when you don't have That's to. why I died on my very first turn. Yes, do not engage. Okay, okay, here's something. All right, I, it says, I, I got a solar collector and it says ready to launch. How do we yes. launch? Okay, so there'll be a um, unit above your capital and yeah. uh, so try to select that and then in the bottom left uh, there will be some uh, choices uh, above the solar collector thing there and one of them is launch and then you'll uh, have the orbital um, unit screen and then you'll be able to launch it above your uh, above your capital which is probably what you should do now since just you... launch it above the capital like or yeah because what it, what a solar collector does it gives plus one energy which is basically gold or you know the the currency in beyond earth um a plus one energy to the yield of all the tiles that would be affected by that satellite or by okay, that so, orbit. so it's you can only launch within the blue area surrounding your city correct yeah. Got it. And there's lots of techs and other things which will extend that blue area out so you can use, you can start to use uh, units more offensively later on. All right. Yeah, the orbital layer, uh, orbital units can be uh, uh, very, very uh, effective. They are essentially are almost like the great generals of um, Beyond Earth, uh, which great generals were units in, I think they were in Civ Ford Kiefer, so at least you should be familiar with them. But, you know, yeah. they, gave, they gave a combat bonus to uh, units that were within. Um, two tiles, and so there's a something called the TACnet hub. Hey, and I found a solar collector too. Yay! So you guys will see it launch, and you'll talk to see what I was talking about with Kiva right here. So I'm gonna launch it over above my uh, my capital of Freeland. Guys, I have free land. All right, we are the land of the free in Paul Australia. Do not attack us. Free? Can I just have free? it? Wait, yeah, it's free. We have three. What? It's free. Oh, free. I'll be right over to collect that. Okay. Uh, okay. With you. Now, once once you launch once you launch the solar collector, do you? It doesn't do anything. You just leave it alone, or is it a unit you can move, or? You cannot move it. It is a uh, stationary thing, and it has a duration of, uh, I think, twenty turns. But it's different for each type of orbital unit. Uh, so it, it's up there. And it stays. It's a it's a time limit thing. And you'll get a warning that says, you know, uh, orbital unit about to fall out of orbit. So that you you know when they uh, when they when they start they start dying. Now, if it crashes into the ground and you have a unit underneath it, will it be damaged? It will not. Uh, but there is something called a crashed satellite um, site. Oh God! Aliens are attacking me. Yeah, sometimes they just go ahead and attack even when you don't attack them. So, like I said, run, they're run. they're a bitch to deal with. Oh, don't go in the miasma. <clears throat> yeah, the green miasma is not good either, guys. I think I'm gonna die. So, uh, the crash satellite uh, uh, site is uh, something that your explorers can do. So you guys all started with an explorer unit. Um, and one of the things that they can do, in addition to kind of being scouts, is that uh, if you go, if you find a, there's things like alien skeleton, uh, progenitor ruins, or uh, a couple other random things, you can create an expedition and it'll take five to ten turns to complete the expedition, and then you'll get a bonus there, too. And there's a finite number of expeditions that each Explorer unit can do. So you can see at the bottom of your Explorer tab, it says Explorer Expedition Modules 1. So right now, the one that you start with starts with 1, but there are some things that you can do to, to give them more uh, uh, modules to do, just as an FYI. And some of them have to do with the quests. So that's kind of a cool thing that you, that you can advance your um, your affinities by the quests. And I'm gonna chat to Paul here. <laughs> and I'm dying from the miasma, uh, but I'm gonna take over this alien nest. Yay, alien nests! So, uh, like barbarian camps in uh, uh, most civilizations, you get a small gold or and or energy bonus for attacking the alien nests, uh, which are quite nice, and then also means they stop spawning from there, uh, which is a good thing. 
So if uh, you're trying to move someplace and it shows red, that means you can't move there, obviously, right? Yes. Um, so yeah, you're probably encountering the canyons and the mountains, uh, which are just impassable terrain uh, here in in, uh, in in Beyond Earth. How can I make the chat window bigger? <laughs> um, I guess you can't. Install a mod. Yeah, I got another research pod. So obviously early on in the game is very similar to uh, most uh, 4X games in that you're just exploring your surroundings. Um, we're started with a pretty, uh, the standard size map, which as you guys can see from the mini map up here, it's quite, quite large. Uh, so it looks like, oh man. We are all very far away from each other. Uh, except for who's playing, Kiefer, you're playing Man Mandira or the... Uh, yeah, no, I happen to be in the center of all four of you, so this should be fun. How do yeah, you... but I'm the only one on that continent. And then well, we've got a huge thanks. isthmus here uh, that connects the other continent, which has... Thanks for the intel, Cheeto, because none of us can see that. We didn't take that. Uh... Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm dropping intel all over your faces. <sighs> now, can you also just look over and look at Justin's screen? Oh, you're, you're screen cheating. Too. You're totally screen cheating. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I told the uh, the designers when I met them. God, all right, so here's my first... Uh, I'll get to that in one second, but I have my first quest decision here, and it's basically like, which uh, affinity do you want to start going down? How do I turn on the resources on the map? There's a uh, little button to the left of the mini-map up in the upper right. Ah, there we go. Yeah, so how do I make a quest decision? It says I need to make one, but I don't know where to click. You click all the way in the bottom right, just click where that circle that where the quest decision is. There we go. Bingo. Thanks, Tito. I won't use that information against you. The quest decisions? No, the uh, map overlay. Oh, the map resources. Well, that's information you should all have. I am an informationist. Well, I've been totally exploring in the wrong direction. There is no wrong direction, although Josh is near you, FYI. You guys, I think, all have the ability to see where everyone's capital is, at least in relation to each other. Is that correct? Yeah, we do. That is, I think, a, a neat feature, uh, or a much different feature than Civ Five, uh, especially as pertains to multiplayer, in that... Uh, your starting locations are revealed from from the beginning. Totally changes how you how you play this stuff. Oh, now you guys want to see all the all the resources. Fine in the chat. I personally hate playing this way. Uh, and I think uh, Laini, you were the guy who asked me to do it, or the or the girl who asked me to do it um, during one of my streams before. So I'll, I'll put them on for a little while. Uh, but I, I, I like getting the visual cues from the thing itself. And, of course, there's a lot of resources uh, that mean lots of different things here. Um, the ones that are uh, near me, I'll start to explain. Um, so I'm not going to talk about the strategic resources because that will give you guys all of, the, all of the intel. But I have some, some chitin. And chitin is a basically a uh, uh, bugs. Bugs that you harvest, and the way to uh, get the yield from those from this resource is to build a paddock, which is essentially a pasture, but for bugs. And then you harvest the chitin from them to, I don't know, as a building material or something like that. Um, is it still worthwhile to automate your workers? In this case, no. Actually, that's not true. Early on, it's probably fine because they'll just get to go to the resources and, and do the, the things that are necessary. Bio. But in the late game, when you actually would want to automate workers, I have found that they uh, there's so many new and different weird uh, tile improvements that you can do uh, based on the, the technologies that you've researched uh, that they oftentimes just pick one and go with it, which is not always the best strategy. 
So like say if you automate all your workers, they'll only build um, farms or they'll only build generators, uh, which improves your uh, energy yield. All right, so I got uh, my first technology, pioneering, which is pretty much the standard default to do first, uh, as I uh, told everybody, uh, because it is how you start to build colonists. It's how you build uh, the trade depot, uh, which allows you to uh, create trade units, uh, such as the trade convoy, which is an overland trade unit and a trade vessel. For those of you who are familiar with Civ 5, trade works completely different well, not completely different, but a little bit differently in uh, in Beyond Earth in that your trade uh, routes are not dependent upon your entire sieve, but instead on each city. So each city has, if you have a trade depot, uh, two trade routes available to them. And there's, there's technologies and other things that you can do which can increase that number. All right. I'm in the tech web. I think I'm going to do physics. Uh, which can only help me in building terrible units to destroy my enemies. Not that I'm doing that, you guys. Totally not doing that. I don't uh, believe you. Actually, I, I, am, I am doing that. Well, I see as long as we're all far away from each other until I can build laser tanks. <clears throat> yeah, that's actually true. We're not going to I don't think we're going to get into conflict anytime soon. Good. The conflicts will be <laughs> plenty of time to recover from the early game mistakes I probably already made. Yeah. The conflict will be against ourselves and our environment. Uh, so yeah, the the resources um, that are the most important are going to be the strategic resources. Uh, so those include uh, xenomass, uh, which is essentially biological goo, uh, which can be harvested to create uh, special units. Uh, and also some buildings uh, require uh, an ample supply of xenomass. Uh, there's also float stone which, um, uh, as you can tell by how it's depicted on the map, uh, floats. <laughs> and uh, can be used also for, for buildings and units. Oh my god, aliens everywhere. They're coming out of the goddamn walls. Oh no, what did you do, Paul? I didn't do anything. They're just all coming after me. Nuke them like from orbit. Wolf, I have like four wolf beetle packs. I don't know what to tell you. All these aliens are being bros with me, so... Oh no! Like, kill the right. harmony! Kill kill the harmony player! I I don't I didn't make any harmony decisions, but I'm just saying they're like my besties. I think he, I think uh, what John is saying is that he loves aliens. They gave me a little hug. They uh, they dropped off. By the, if I get wiped out by the aliens like early on, I'm gonna be so pissed. They dropped off this awesome uh, Xeno mass for me. They just gave it to me. It was it was pretty cool. Like, Here you go. Here you go, buddy. So Sigourney Weaver, you're not. Or well, he is an, a, a gorilla in the mist. Depending on uh, Aliens 3, I kind of am Sigourney Weaver, and I'm going to have terrifying babies. <laughs> How about that? <coughs> He's got a point. Uh, I agree with um, Morgan Juice in the chat when he says, kill everyone. Kill all the things. Kill all the things. How are you doing, Josh? Are you dying? Are you alive? Uh, I seem to be doing okay. Uh, no aliens to speak of quite yet, so that's good. I know you have a personal vendetta against the aliens. Uh, yeah, but I like to wait until I can actually kill them before I start fucking with them, so uh, it's good they're not around. That's a pretty good uh, strategy. I do like to be a strategy man. That's a a strategist. I think my favorite resource, my new new resource, is tubers. Delicious tubers. It's, 
These hooli women are digging for tubers. <laughs> That's a, a quote for some reason that stuck in my brain from an old uh, Discovery Channel style, uh, you know, old Discovery Channel style uh, documentary on uh, native peoples in Africa or something like that. And even on another planet, you can dig for tubers. It's true. And they give you plus to, uh, two uh, health, or, or, or food, rather. So are you guys confused about any of the uh, the resources? Have I gone over them in enough detail? Do you need Do you need anything? Uh, no. I would like to know how to get rid of miasma, though. Well, you have to research uh, alien biology. Oh, okay. Uh, which is a leaf technology in underneath ecology. Uh, also, uh, there is a orbital unit uh, which you get from researching ecology, uh, which is called the Miasmic Repulsor. And those are very useful, especially in the early game, uh, to clear a large swath of area of miasma. Very cool. So you, you, can, you, you launch it, and over 10 turns, it will suck up all the miasma and make it go away. All right, looks like we're waiting on John. Yeah, John, you're taking a long time, huh? Sorry, I'm uh, I'm just so incredibly virtuous over here. You like that? Huh? Are you trying to choose a virtue? I might, I might just be. So the virtue, virtue system what is, virtue? is uh, the basically the culture uh, uh, or social policy system from Civ Five, uh, with a you know a bit of the wrinkle in uh, synergy bonuses. Uh, so you can it's basically like a, like a uh, a series of four trees, um, talent trees that you can kind of invest in. Um, but if you're encouraged to uh, spread them around and or concentrate on one, like you can get these synergy bonuses by having you know five of uh, virtues chosen in you know might, for example, or knowledge, and then it increases your science and or uh, culture, that kind of thing. So once you have enough culture, you'll be able to choose one of these, Paul. I guess. I'm assuming you didn't build an old Earth relic yet. Nope, still working on some other stuff. Probably it's should do that. Though. No, it the virtues be. can be very powerful, especially in combating the aliens, because in the might tree, there is a nice one called survivalism, uh, which gives you plus 25 strength against all alien life forms. What? Uh, which the, a, that uh, size of a bonus basically makes you badass. Uh, and there's also one called, I think, um, scavenging, uh, which is the one up from uh, survivalism, but in the second tier of virtues, which gives you science for killing alien life forms. So you will be justified in your genocide. And it makes you a bad person. And you're automatically a bad person. Which most of you guys are, let's be honest. All about context. Sorry, yes, uh, C.A.'s Haig uh, pointed out it's plus 25%, not plus 25 strength. Uh, so most of the bonuses in uh, in Civ games are, are percentage-wise, not necessarily in, in, in uh, at least in the virtues are percentage-wise. So yeah, that's important to keep in mind. So even if you have a badass tank in the late game, you still have a plus 25% bonus against all alien units, which is a handy bonus. I'm not going to lie. All right. I finally have my worker built. Jeez, that took a long time. Maybe it's because John Bolding took so long reading. I love to read, and I'm, I'm great at it. You're a good reader. Um, and uh, that was actually one of my... One of my criticisms of this game was that it is a bit overwhelming uh, and by a bit I mean a lot overwhelming um, to a uh, to a player even after you know I played through this game uh, about six or seven times at this point now um, even then I'm still reading every single uh, pop-up and every single technology and, and what does this do again what does this do what what Buildings does this give me? Do I need the right affinity thing to do this? Um, okay, here's a, here's a stupid question. Okay. 
How do you how do you make a how do you choose a quest decision? I mean, I'm trying to click on something and it won't allow me to. Or... The bottom right circle. So get out of the the quest, uh, you know. Um, Got it. Overlay and the bottom right circle where it says quest decision. Click there. Got it. I see it. And then a pop up will come up. Got it. Ha! Uh, yes, Wizian. Thank you in the chat for pointing it out. An uncivil war uh, with Jim and Yahtzee playing Civilization would be quite punny. Although, I don't know how they would manage that. Uh, I, that would be up to uh, the fun of, of uh, the Jim and Yahtzee have coming up with the challenges. I'm not sure what they would do um, and how they could make it as action-packed and fun as most of the uncivil wars are. But, hey, I watch it. Five stars, would watch again. Uh, so the, for those of you guys just joining us, I am Greg Tito, Editor-in-Chief of The Escapist. Hello. We are playing Civilization Beyond Earth. Uh, and by we, I mean a large swath of uh, Escapist Mag staff members are here playing. Uh, we have lots of fun people. Let's go ahead and let them introduce themselves. Uh, go ahead, you guys. Let's start with Paul. Uh, hi, I'm Paul Goodman, video editor here at The Escapist. And who are you playing as? Um, I didn't hear that. There's some background noise. Sorry. Who are you playing as? Uh, Brasilia. Brasilia! Nice. And then we have Mr. Kiefer, uh, senior editor in charge of news and features. Yeah, and I... Um, how do I tell who I'm playing again? <laughs> uh, you're playing the Indian lady, uh, which her name is... Yeah, Indian lady. Yeah, right. I, and I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm very big on research and technology and ex exploration right now, which I'm just kind of doing aimlessly. And we're also joined by Mr. Bolding. I'm John Bolding, uh, senior editor here at The Escapist, and I am playing the powerful African African cooperative who are all about uh, having something to eat. Yeah, they get the food bonus. Tasty deliciousness. I bet they're digging for tubers. Oh, I'm I'm digging for tubers. Oh, I apologize. I'm actually the Pan Asian Cooperative, not Brasilia. I apologize. Ah, the Pan Asian Cooperative, or PAC. We build stuff. Yes, uh, they have what the worker the worker unit bonus and then the wonder bonus. I think too, right? They also have the so, yeah. longest to take your turn every turn bonus uh, for being played by public. <laughs> Uh, and then finally, we have managing editor on, Josh Vanderwall. Hi, Josh. Uh, hello, Josh Vanderwall, managing editor here, and I am playing uh, Franco Iberia, I believe. Ah, uh, LOD. Yeah. That is the one name the I remember. Uh, so, should I attack these aliens? Yes. Should I? But, absolutely. Right. I did. I, I attacked him. Good man. They're going to start attacking me now, but that's okay. I got a research pod. That's great. Um, so, yeah, I am playing as Polystralia, uh, which has the added benefit slash bonus of plus two extra trade routes from my capital, um, which is not going to come into play right now because I got nobody to trade with. Because we are playing on a Protean map, uh, which is essentially a Pangea map. So everybody's on the same uh, continent. It's a mega continent. And uh, we, there's no other uh, AI faction, so it's only us playing, only human players. And uh, I chose the, the ability to see the coastline. I don't get to see the actual terrain of that coastline but i can see the outline of the of the continents just to kind of get the the lay of the land uh as one of the choices for kitting out my spaceship to go to uh, uh this new planet here um so i get a little bit of an advantage there but i am am a bit disadvantaged in uh that i as i said i need more people to be able to send trade routes to how, how reliable is your advisor um, you know, I pretty much turned them off pretty early, so I, w I would say no. I'm your advisor now, Paul. 
John. Yeah, well. <laughs> I advise you to attack Josh. Yeah, I'll keep using the in-game advisor then. Thank you. <laughs> You're probably better off. I mean, he will point out new concepts to you, so that's that's definitely good. Um, the hint system is is pretty well designed, I do have to say. Uh, you get a, uh, a a clue of what's happening uh, pretty well from from all that. So not not a bad thing if you guys are new to the game to uh, to do that. And yes, uh, C Hig, you, you can send trade routes to yourself, uh, but that's why I need to start uh, building some new units. And actually, the trade routes to yourself are actually a lot more lucrative than they were in uh, Civ Five. Uh, in any case, because you can. Uh, Again, through technologies and buildings, um, gain bonuses to and and virtues, I think as well, gain bonuses to uh, individual uh, inter-empire trade routes. Uh, so that's a, definitely a very viable strategy, especially for a new city or a new uh, outpost, which we'll get to when you guys uh, uh, start founding your, your your outposts, because you don't just plop down a new city in Beyond Earth. You create an outpost which takes 10 turns to fully become a uh, functioning city within your empire. And within those 10 turns, it's vulnerable to attack. It's vulnerable to um, uh, you know, aliens attack as well as, as your, uh, your, your human enemies. And it uh, can be sped up. That process can be sped up through sending a trade route to that uh, outpost. Uh, as well, I think one of the factions has a uh, bonus to outpost growth. Which may be uh, you, Kiefer. I think, Kiefer, that's you. What, what did I do? You have a bonus to outpost growth. Yes, because I like to be expansionist. Exactly. So your outposts turn into real things quicker. Is there anything you need to do with the outpost? Just time. You so building a... a road to it or anything like that won't be important or anything. A trade route uh, speeds it up. So if you send, if you have a trade route available and you send it to them, uh, that will make it go fifty percent faster. So that that nine turns or ten turns, I think it's nine turns. Nine turns turns into you know four and a half turns. All right. Uh, so I have built up quite a bit of uh, energy here by not not buying anything, and I think I'm gonna. Ooh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna purchase and city per, uh, building purchasing is totally something you should guys should start thinking about. As an FYI. Yeah, you're right. Didn't think about that. <clears throat> because the early buildings that you have are, are relatively cheap. Well, I officially changed the name of my capital city. Oh, nice. You can totally do that, too. Yes. What did you change it to? Let me see. I want to see I if it actually did. shows up over here. I am so dead. Oh, Kiefer. You are so dead. Yes. You guys are dead to me. I see dead people, and it's myself. I hope... I hope I hope you survive. The onslaught of aliens. Uh, that's true, uh, C.S. Haig. Uh, your um, affinities start to affect uh, the way you are viewed by your uh, counterparts. Which, um, I think in a multiplayer game, the, it kind of foregoes the... Uh, leader heads that pop up. So like when we speak to each other or do anything, um, we're not going to see those. So uh, in this in this setting, you guys won't be able to see the the changes, which is sad because I kind of wanted to, to see, uh, you know, Paul's uh, Asian lady turn into a uh, what a cyborg. Are you going to go the cyborg route, Paul? What do you think? I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just kind of trying not to get murdered by aliens right now. That's a pretty good strategy. Your, 
You're, you're, it's like you're there's doing? an alien nest like right outside my capital city, and they've been really, really aggressive. Like even they're even they're coming up to my borders and just like trying to chew through anybody who tries to leave. You're doing a pretty good job so far, anyway. Looks like all you guys are doing more energy than me. So there's a thing you can do that it doesn't really it's not really cheating, but it's definitely able you can kind of judge how how good uh, how much energy and science people have, uh, and you guys can do this too if you click on uh, the diplomacy. So like, hey, talk to the owner of this city or whatever, and then you can see the items that they can offer. So I know that, for example, Josh is getting 10 energy per turn and six science per turn. How am I doing? Well, according to this, you are getting five energy per turn and six science per turn, which is not that good. In contrast, I'm only getting four energy per turn, uh, which I'm not really sure why, seeing as I, I had it. Well, no, my, my solar collector went away, so that's why. Bye bye, solar collector. Bye bye. And yes, you guys are discussing the uh, affinities in the chat. So, um, CS Haig, you have it right. Supremacy uh, is the cyborgs. Uh, essentially, it's in incorporating technology into the human genome uh, so that uh, you are able to deal with the harshness of this land through robotics. Um, they use Firaxite a lot, which is the orange prickly uh, resource that some of you may have uh, seen or discovered. And hey, this game was developed by Firaxis. It's a good uh -huh. joke, Firaxis. Everyone's uh -huh. proud Get it? Yeah, yeah, we get it. Get it? Yeah, we get it. I know. I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't know who I am or, or what anybody is. You, um, you and then, of course, there's Purity. Uh, which believes in keeping the, the human genome pure uh, and uh, their units are more about uh, you know exoskeletons and huge tanks and uh, um, mechs I guess to a certain extent uh, where you know so that there's humans who are in, contr in control less about the robots infecting the human body itself and then there's harmony uh, which is nice and green uh, which believes in incorporating the alien uh, species within the human genome. So adapting to the planet that everyone's on, uh, using the miasma and the xenomass to um, make more powerful units and uh, structures. So that's how it breaks down. Um, and uh, there's quest decisions that, that, that funnel into that, but most of the... Uh, Decisions will be made through um, what technologies you research. So keep that in mind, people. And um, well, let me show you guys the tech web here. Um, that's all. All that's denoted by these um, symbols on some of these leaf technologies. So the tech web is a little bit of a different thing. A lot of sci-fi games have a tech web, but. What's different about uh, the one in Beyond Earth is that there are uh, what they call branch technology. So, say for example, um, yeah, that's nice. Who's rocking that? Sorry, that's my ringtone for my daughter. That's uh, that's awesome. Um, so there's branch technologies like genetics, uh, chemistry here, engineering, um, and then there's uh, leaf technologies below those, which um, basically are, are, are more specialized uh, and harder to research versions of, uh, not versions, but you know, like offshoots of genetics. So for example, uh, alien life forms is something that would uh, allow you to make a couple of improvements or, or increase the yield of things. Uh, and most, if not all of the um, affinity technologies uh, are ones that are these leaf technologies. So you kind of you know, you don't necessarily want to get every single one of these leaf technologies. You want to kind of pick and choose which ones uh, that you want uh, to further your own philosophy.
And I don't, I like to, I mean, like I said, I played this through this game a couple of times at this point, and I don't necessarily make that call of which affinity I'm going to do um, until an opportunity presents itself. It kind of is like, all right, well, I'm going to go do this because I have the resources that I want or I, I've got the technologies that I needed uh, to move forward. Or I see that, for example, you know, I'm going to be around a lot of miasma, so perhaps harmony will help because uh, you gain... The affinities have a couple of different bonuses. You have you get bonuses that are always on, kind of passive bonuses, just by leveling up, as you can see in the display here. Um, and you can pick and choose, like you can double, you can dip into them. So, you know, hey, you can get, say you're mostly doing purity, but then you have one or two uh, or three in harmony, you get the benefits of those harmony bonuses too. So that's an important strategy to remember as well, because those early ones are actually really useful. For example, the sp supremacy number one thing is explorer units. Uh, can build an additional expedition, which is awesome. But also the purity number one thing is great is that aliens won't attack your explorers. So if you are you know, investing heavily in explorers and you're tired of them being killed by aliens, pick a purity. Go a little purity. Just go a little pure. Why not? Hey, how you doing Thrax360? This is Civilization Beyond Earth which is a science fiction version of Civilization. It's got a lot of different changes, a lot of things are different. Um, so uh, pay attention and you'll learn some stuff. And I am being, yes, I'm being Paul Australia, which to my knowledge is the only official Australian um, representation in a Civilization game. Can anyone correct me on that? I think you might be right. There's been Paul Australia before. I mean, uh, there's been Polynesia before. But no Australia. Which is sad. Because, you know, they have such a vital, strong... Uh, heritage. That's the word I was going for. So there's a bunch of these quest decisions which you guys have probably already encountered, which um, when you build a building you have these binary choices which uh, pop up every time a new building is built. And I'm going to dance a little bit to Kiefer's other ringtone. Sorry, I'll shut off my phone. No, I love it. I love it. Keep it going. I want more music to be in the background. Um, DJ Kiefer is, is keeping, keeping the mood alive. Ah. Uh, so you have these decisions that you can make with every single uh, building that's built. And with a sci-fi game that's got lots of buildings to build, there's a lot of decisions to be made. And it's unclear, uh, to me at least, um, hey, I don't know whether Plus One Production is going to be good now or later or what. So uh, my trade depots, I generally like production. If you're doing already investing in trade depots, you probably already have enough energy. So I'm going to go with my the resources will aid in uh, production. So there you guys go. You know you know what my quest decisions have been. Yes, it helps. What are you us gonna so do much. about it? Why Absolutely you... nothing because you're very far away. Oh, I'm coming for you, Paul. Don't worry. You're coming to give me hugs? I'm coming to get you. With the the, the hug unit. It's huggable. I don't know what I'm doing at this point. I'm actually kind of spreading around my uh, virtues, which I generally don't do. But as I started to, I started to, to want to be a little bit more offensive. But then, as Paul pointed out, we're all very far from each other, uh, so there's almost no point in doing so, uh, unless I was going to start a genocide on the aliens. And even then, I'm I there aren't that many aliens uh, attacking me right now. Jealous. All jealous, I'm sure. Since he's getting murdered by aliens. Yeah, like there's there's tons of wolf beetles. They're coming up my city. I'm blowing them up with my city, and then they run away. And it's like, really, guys? Are you not getting the hint? Are you blowing them up with peace missiles? Trying to make her missiles. All right, peace missiles. Peace peace missiles are you know banned by the charter that we all agreed to. When we started this game. That's what I heard. Yeah. That's what I heard too. 
not a monster. I'm not going to use peace missiles. You're kind of a monster. I mean, and kind of in that you're killing all the aliens. You, you monster. You monster. At this point, it really is self-defense. Like, I'm not even, like, trying to expand in their direction, and they're just, they've, they've been coming after me from, from day one. Yeah, sure, whatever. Monster. Yeah. Uh, are you comfortable with that? Would you, would you tell your children that? I will tell my children that. That one time I was playing in this Civ Beyond Earth multiplayer, I killed all the aliens, and I, it, there was a good reason, though. There was, there was a good reason, though. And the reason for that escapes me. All right. Should I attempt to control the Isthmiths? Spell that for me. Isthmith. Oh. I uh, it's 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 we're hauling through beers like it's if this morning. <laughs> Beginning to look a lot like Ithmus. Everywhere you look. Oh, that's a pretty good Bing Crosby uh, 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 thing there. <laughs> Just for you, Craig. You know, Bing. Good old Bing. Bern, All right, so. Bern Crosby. Who's a who's a Bing Crosby fan in the chat? Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, oh, yes, damn. you are correct, D and D striker. I am making a Panamanian city on the isthmus. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Bing Crosby's Christmas album is the greatest album ever made. Discussed. Uh, no, no contest. It's definitely the best. It is. Holy, uh, holy butts. I guess that's a siege worm. Yes. John Bolding is encountering the large land-based uh, creature called the siege worm, which yes, I wish I, I could show you guys. But that I is. Haven't discovered one yet myself. Is it going to go after me? or? Oh, yeah. Really? And it will one-shot. Basically everything, I think. Everything. Yeah, you should probably run away. So, uh... So what part of total defeat don't you understand? Very little. Yeah, the siege worms are a bitch. Yeah, that's pretty heinous. You basically need to coordinate, like, three or four units to take it down. Early, and, uh, your, uh, actually, your city, your city's, uh, ranged attack is actually the best thing to attack them. As an FYI. Or I can just hope it doesn't murder me. You can do that. Uh, you can invest in uh, an ultrasonic fence. Sounds like something really useful. Yeah, so the ultrasonic fence is something you... Uh, it's, a, it's a city uh, improvement which prevents alien units coming within two tiles of your cities. So essentially, Paul, if you're tired of, of blowing up alien units that are near you, uh, you can build a ultrasonic fence and uh, they won't come near you. And it looks like my explorer unit just walked into a huge group of aliens here. Uh, and even though I've been pretty passive against these aliens, I am not certain they are going to leave me alone. So, uh, like in Civ Five, is there an ideal different distance between your cities? Um, wasn't that uh, Civ Four? Well, I, I just meant, uh, you know, Civ Five. You don't want to build your cities too incredibly close together because eventually they'll start to squish into each other. Yes. Uh, so uh, four tiles, five tiles or so. Okay. I think in uh, uh, Beyond Earth, and actually, and especially with the size of this map, it will behoove you to actually spread out a bit more than that. Right. Because the amount of territory that your cities can encompass uh, does eventually grow pretty large, as you as you mentioned. So yeah, I would. Uh, I'd spread out. Spread your wings. 
I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna spread my wings and then I'm gonna fly. That's what good people do. So I've actually got th looks like three different isthmuses I can I can control here. <laughs> I'm gonna giggle every time I say isthmus. Isthmus. <laughs> isthmus. And I'm not even, it's not even a lisp, it's just actually how it's pronounced. On a scale of one to isthmus, how do you feel about today? Um, it's beginning to feel a lot like isthmus. Keeper, where were you like three minutes ago? We yeah, already we, made that joke. We just made that joke. You were texting, I understand. Yeah, I was answering, answering my daughter, I apologize. No need to apologize. I don't, uh, I don't listen to my daughter, so it's good that you do. Spend a lot of time talking to your child. It's like it's like you're responsible for that, that <laughs> thing or something. It's like family is important to you and not video games. Bingo. <laughs> I, I shouldn't say that. Video games are important to me, obviously, but you got to have your priorities. <laughs> That's terrible. So, uh, how's everybody doing? Uh, this is uh, The Escapist. We are a magazine uh, that enjoys playing the video games uh, and our families. Um, and uh, this is uh, Civilization Beyond Earth uh, and a multiplayer match. Uh, many people who are in uh, uh, the Escape is a Magazine staff, um, which I'll allow them to introduce themselves later. But uh, if you're liking what you're seeing, uh, definitely give the Escape is a Magazine channel a follow. We do this kind of stuff all the time. Uh, mostly it's you know one on one. This is we're experimenting here with some amazingly uh, fun multiplayer, uh, and uh, we do stuff uh, Monday through Friday, pretty much every day. Um, gym acquisition, uh, gym draw activity is on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time and uh, Thursdays uh, we do uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, we're starting with fifth, fifth edition uh, campaign using the Tyranny of Dragons. Jonathan Boldy, who is a member of this game multiplayer game right now, is the DM there and does a very good job. Um, so yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on. So uh, follow us if you like us. And guys, please sound off and say why they should follow us. Uh, hi, I'm Paul Gilman, video editor here. You should follow us because I play horror games and everyone likes to make fun of me for being scared. And yes, we do. To join so you can make fun of me being scared too. Yeah, I'm John Kiefer, and senior editor of News and Features, and mainly because our News and Features are totally awesome. That's that's a good point. Oh my God! I just oh. It's like the turn. The turn started, and like ten aliens descended on my area. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm having that exact same problem right now. Like they're coming out. Of, they're coming out of the goddamn walls. It is like full on aliens. You know, Hicks is Hudson has gotten pulled down underneath the grate. You know? Game over, man. Apon. No one knows where where's where Wizbowski is. It really Personally, is. Personally, I'm not even convinced there are aliens on this planet. Um, yeah, as am I. I. Uh... Oh, hey, Tito, I found you. Hi. Day, day 706. Oh, We've yet to see evidence of alien life. I do, at least have evidence of Paul. Yeah, I want you to not be here. This is my land. Hey, maybe I can help out against those aliens. No, you can't. There is no helping. There are no aliens. Oh, Paul, you set up an expedition right there. Yeah, I did. That was smart, seeing as you just saw my unit go right near you. Are oh, you man. going to attack me? Are I'm at what's me? called a decision point, people. <laughs> don't. Do I? It'd be really nice if you didn't. What would you give me? Um, let's see. I won't not give you anything. <laughs> <laughs> can, uh... can you triple negative that anymore? Uh, oh, hey, we lost something. Uh, what's happening here? Um, thanks for pointing that out. Uh, it's showing up now. I think. Let's see. It's in my X split uh, thing, but it may not be showing up uh, when it goes live. Let's see. 
Sorry about that, guys. You're seeing a black hole in the in our uh, our stream. Instead of what I'm seeing, which is Paul's uh, delightful mug, uh, which is now back on the stream. Good job. Good job, everyone. Especially me. Oh yeah. Alien nest discovered. Should I kill said alien nest? No. But I really want to. I really, really want to. I'm going to lose respect for you. Uh, Justin Klaus in the uh, Escapes Magazine chat is telling me to attack Paul. Thanks, yes. Justin. All he ever does is tell you to attack Paul. That's true. It, it's important. You see, you guys don't seem to understand how Justin operates is in any game he doesn't know how to play, if I'm there and it's a competitive game, he will target me first because he's a jerk like that. <laughs> so you can bet that if Justin were in this Beyond Earth game that he would be driving for me hard and like coming at me with all his tanks and everything. Because that's how Justin rolls. That is. He rolls on tanks. And in this game, he'll roll on floating tanks. Beautiful floating tanks. Yeah. Paul, uh, so for now, I'm not going to kill your explorer. Uh, I but appreciate I'd, that. I'd be even more uh, inclined to not kill your explorer if you were to not not pay me. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't blackmail me or have trade with me if you kill my guy. So it's simple as that. Uh... I mean, I mean, I could blackmail you, actually. Well, if you kill my guy, I have no incentive to trade with you. So that's pretty much how it works. So make me an offer. Um. Okay. Well, let's see. What? Let me pull up the diplomacy menu, and I'll get back to you. Okay. <laughs> oh no! Ah oh, man. So my poor little explorer got a little bit vulnerable here. Eh, maybe he's being attacked, maybe he's not. Oh Paul, your ruin is in miasma too. So you're losing you're losing HP. And you got another explorer there. Oh. Very vulnerable. I kind of wish I could train aliens onto your explorers. Like that this is be, EverQuest. That would, be, that would be amazing. Oh, hey, we got uh, uh, Dan Epstein is in the in the in the chat. Hey, no hey, right man. witch. Is that a Halloween reference? I'm gonna assume it is. Uh, and yes, I'm glad that you're watching me and not doing your uh, your, your work. That's that, I think that's what most of Twitch is about. Can I get a, can I get an, a, a a yay or nay from the chat on this? That most of people uh, who watch Twitch is uh, not working or using it to shirt work or to rhyme words. Tito, I sent you a deal. How, how come you haven't accepted yet? Um. Ah. Just a cooperation. We have to start somewhere, don't we? Uh, yeah. yeah. Counter proposal. Yep. All right, so I was totally right. Everyone in the chat, the chat is like, "Yep, yep, yep." This is me not working. Yep. You have all made me happy for humanity. Oh come on, Paul! You're gonna nickel and dime me. Fine. Fine. Well, I might even problem. attack the aliens for you. What do you think about that? 
What's the problem, Boldine? It's shaped uh, like it's about 20 miles long, and it's like a worm. It's a pretty big problem. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm going for right now. That's There's, what I'm trying Oh, man, to I do. wish I could see what's going on with your siege worms. They're, uh, they're living up to their names? Yeah. I think it's kind of their thing, actually. It's what they do. I'm yeah. actually not that far away from your city, so maybe I'll go check it out and see what's happening. You shouldn't. You don't really want to get into this. And honestly. by check it out, I mean attack you. <laughs> you also don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Because I think it, it'll probably attack you first. And I'll probably get killed just like the rest of you guys. Yep. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, what do I get if I try to establish a, a trade route? You will get many things. Wait, did I give you... Wait. Is that true? What? What's going on? Paul. I am what? an idiot. What did I do? I'm giving you energy per turn. Oh, you're giving me energy per turn? I'm, I'm in favor of that. That's fine. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's what happened. And the, the chat pointed it out because I'm dumb. All right, well, if you want to cancel it and, and resend it, go for it. I don't think you can. I think once you accept it, it's it's in. The fix is in. Oh, yep, last for 25 turns. I'm sorry. Well, that means you owe me big time. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm a pretty dumb. Yeah, that's... Uh, that done. was me not looking at here's, the... Here's what I'll do. You done, you done fucked up. I think it was actually in the original offer that I sent. No, it wasn't actually. It was on your bar. Yeah, no, I think I think I screwed it yeah. up in the original offer. Ah, oh, well, thank you, sir. You, That's much. I sent you a counter offer so that you give me a, you give me one energy a turn and I give you two. It'll even out somehow. Paul, that was actually a, a very stand up thing you just did. So everyone, give it up to Paul for being nice. And well, now I would I'm gonna feel really bad about betraying you one day. You should. Yeah, you you should feel bad about that. Yeah. Preemptive, I preemptively feel bad. So bowling trade routes will give you um, if you're in between your own cities, it'll give you uh, production and food uh, exchange for both cities. So it's it's a benefit for both of your cities. If you do it to a uh, uh, one of the neutral stations. Uh, they all have like different bonuses, mm -hmm. um, and uh, mostly the you know the best I, I found the most important ones are science early on, so that's awesome. Um, and then to other other civilization cities, you you gain a high amount of energy as well as okay. science. Interesting. All right, and especially with um uh, the trade vessels, the sea ones are almost always going to be a better, more lucrative deal than the land-based trade convoys. Okay, because they're harder to get. I mean, that makes sense to me. Yeah. So if you can get them, do it. Oh, and look, I got some titanium nearby. What's up, titan? And you guys were waiting for me. That's my bad. Totally didn't realize I had to pick a... a Technology there. I'm the asshole, okay? Fault. Oh, we blame you. I'm the big jerk in this situation. Did you just attack me? I don't know. Yep, you attacked me. Son of a... Son of a... No, I didn't. What are you talking Wait, about? Who, who ended it? Who? Someone just betrayed me. You're right in the face. Who betrayed you? Someone broke the, an agreement with me, and I'm not very happy about it. Oh no, our 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 agreement just ended because. Uh, oh, regularly. Yeah, uh, it only okay. Lasts so long. I'm uh, sorry. I apologize. Then there was a lot of big X's all of a sudden. <sighs> I was like, "What the hell's going on?" Paul. There you go. You're coming back. Always jumping the gun. Gun jumper. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just so paranoid. You are. You are kind of paranoid. I don't want to die horribly at the hands of the alien menace. No, you really don't want to do that. Josh, you're being very quiet over there. I think that means that you're taking over the world silently. Yep. 
probably means he's building an army to attack you. Yeah. Because he knows you're the other player. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Don't tr don't trust those words. I, I I definitely don't trust those words. Don't trust the lies. Especially because it's coming from a, a Franco-Iberia, which I, th I find kind of hilarious that France and Spain somehow got together and were like, hey, we're, we're, we're near each other. We're kind of in the same cultural close. zone. Um, and Kiefer... Yes. Are you alive? Are, are are people attacking you? Yeah, but I I beat back the aliens barely, but I still beat back the aliens. My my soldiers survived. Good. The alien menace must not be allowed to prosper. Unless of course I, I go uh, harmony, which I'm not sure if I do. So, man, it looks like all of the, uh, and I guess we haven't really gone over um, the stations as much, but these are kind of neutral uh, things that show up somewhat randomly. Uh, you can choose, there's a quest early on that says, like, hey, there's two of them who want to, want to trade with you. Uh, which one do you choose? Um, but they kind of function, like, similar to uh, City States did uh, in Civ Five, and that there are these neutral parties that uh, um, don't have any aims at, at getting a victory condition on their own uh, but could uh, be used as uh, things to start wars essentially so if hey if you've got a, a lucrative trade partner or you've got a, a, a good thing going you don't necessarily uh, want to allow your enemies to attack and or kill those city states so I found that they were a nice little wrinkle in, in the general um, uh, strategies that you would uh, try to pursue. In... It also seems a little bit like, why would you ever really want to kill them unless you're trying to cripple your the other guy's economy, right? Because the bonuses are pretty excellent. The bonuses are excellent, and they, I think the only way reason you'd want to kill them, uh, there's a couple of quests that uh, okay want you to that you know have you kill them, um, but is it for territory? You know, like for example, you wanted to found a city to get the resources, because um, in contrast to Civ 5, the stations don't provide anything uh, like strategic resources or anything like that. They only provide the bonuses that uh, you get from the trade um, with them themselves. So It can be very valuable, but it's um, sometimes more valuable just to create an outpost there on your own. Oh man, so this alien nest over here is... Uh, Kind of being a jerk. All right, so I bought a uh, ranger unit, which is basically the first um, archer or ranged unit in the game. And now I don't know what I should do with it. I could go down here and start eradicating these guys. Oh, go attack a worm. Go ahead, I, go attack a worm. Well, I don't have a worm near me yet. I, I think I'm actually going to use it to um, escort my handy-dandy uh, colonist because the last thing I want is for aliens to attack my colonists. Uh, Kindle 54, uh, I, I disagree. The, the bonuses early on uh, for stations uh, is actually quite excellent. Um, Especially with uh, science. You don't get science from trading within your own borders. You get science only uh, from uh, trading with foreign and or, uh, you know, enemy, potentially enemy cities. Uh, so if you have someone nearby who has that bonus. And then also if you complete a few of the trade routes or, you know, basically, you know, send a trade unit there three times, the bonuses improve. So that's something to keep in mind, guys, too, is that you want to create a longer, lasting relationship with these uh, stations if you have trade routes with them. Oh, so send send more trade units? No, you can only send one per, per thing, but over time, the bonuses uh, improve. Okay. Cool. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that if you if you interrupt that, so like, hey, if you, hey, I trade you to them 
later, uh, uh, you know, and then you use that same trade unit to go to a different city and then go back to them, the, the bonuses reset. So you want to continue to keep a relationship going, not, you can't just go back and forth. Very cool. Is that, uh, is that a leaderboard over in the right corner underneath the minimap? Probably. Or is that, uh, no, that's, is that, um, hmm. is that ping? That looks like score, yeah. Oh, okay. And if you hover over it, um, actually, if you go on the di diplomacy window, you'll hover over score, and it shows you exactly where those scores are coming from. So, John, you're doing a pretty good job. Which is not bad, because I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. Well, whatever it is you're doing, keep it up. And I only got, uh, I think to the top there because I just got my second city. Oh my god, aliens, 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 aliens. Get out. Oh, uh, that's hysterical. <laughs> aliens, aliens, aliens. That's my new musical. <laughs> I'm uh, coming to Broadway later this year. Hey, it's Greg Tito's Poly Australian Soldiers. Hello. I wonder if they want to hang out with my African Union Marines. Yeah, Ooh. so it uh, looks like you've leveled up, my friend. You are pure. Uh, you so you guys can figure that out through the uh, diplomacy screen. Uh, has a lot of information. Uh, and that uh, shows basically what your affinity levels are. So both you and Paul uh, want to uh, keep the human race pure, at least for right now. I don't know how to open up the diplomacy screen, but I'm going to go find it now. It's the world uh, symbol thing right by the big circle that ends the turn. There it is. Oh, very cool. Okay. Yeah, I didn't necessarily like really want purity, but uh, there it was next to some useful stuff. Yeah, the, the the simple thing of not having aliens attack your explorers is is worth it. Yeah, it, it just seemed uh, pretty excellent. Now, for those of you who uh, may be starting into trade, uh, you really should think about, and I actually, I'm going to think about it, um, getting ecology and building an ultrasonic fence. Because, not necessarily for the benefit of keeping your... Um, uh, you know what? What the the uh, the the written benefit of the ultrasonic defense is that it keeps units away from two tiles from your city. But a quest decision will pop up that makes your trade units. One of the choices is to make your trade units immune to alien attacks as well. Oh, cool! And that is very very useful. It was actually another one of the things I criticized in my review is that it's there's almost no reason to choose the other choice, which I believe is to extend the range to three uh, around your city, so aliens can't come within three tiles of your city. Um, that seems completely underpowered uh, compared to uh, having all your trade units immune. In Finally, mind. destroyed that alien nest. The xenocide has begun. Well, now I can just give myself some damn breathing room. Oh, Bolding, you changed your name of your city to Boldingia. Hey, why wouldn't I? Yeah. Good name. Boldingia. Great name, and you love it. I'm going to change my second city's name because it's Jimboomba. Like, that's that, a pretty good name. That's really the Standard default name family. of the second city of Paul, St Paul Australia. Jiboomba. Jiboomba. Jiboomba, which I'm going to name... Uh, you got to get that uh, Jiboomba boom 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 base. Greg Boomba. Because I am nothing if not creative. Uh, P.S. I'm not creative. Um, by the way, I just want to give a, a shout-out or a kudos to all the amazing people in the chat. 
uh, who are just debating about what you guys think are good strategies. Uh, I just think that's awesome that, you, you know, there's a lot going on here. And uh, you guys are, 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 are talking about what works and what doesn't work, and I think that's awesome. So kudos to you, my friends. And uh, yes, Dan Epstein, uh, that is uh, one of the Destiny things in the background. Uh, and I don't actually play Destiny, so that's why I'm not on your fire team. <laughs> Because that game is bullshit. You, you, my asthma. You researching something? Because that seems nice. Maybe I want to research that. You want to research Destiny? No, that that he's got some kind of expedition site thing going. You know, maybe I want it to be my expedition site. Like maybe I want to take that away from him. Paul, you you're mean? Talking about, you're talking about me, man. That's me. We're oh, buddies. Oh, I see the siege worm. Also, you're headed. Yeah, I was gonna say you're headed straight for that marauding siege worm, and it's pretty. I see it. Case. The good thing about the siege worm is that they are awful, but they move slow. And by good, I mean that's the only thing that lets, allows you not to die. I don't think there's anything good about any of the things you just said. So <laughs> I'm just gonna put that out there. Uh, all right, I mean, I need to look at my trade uh, because Paul Australia is supposed to be all about the trade, and I actually can't see very many of you guys. Yeah, you got to get that together, man. I gotta. That's why I'm exploring. I have a tough choice. I can either get rid of Fort Barca or trade with Fort Barca as to as a different quest. That's interesting. Fort Barca is pretty good because it gives. Um, a lot of production, doesn't it? Uh, let me check and see what it actually does. Yep, production. And so you, you said like you like production. Hey, what's up, the True Prince? How are you doing? Good to see you. Yes, uh, and Dan Epstein, we do need to do a debate. Uh, we'll chalk that up to, hey, the next time I come to uh, Washington, I will debate you on Destiny, and I will debate Kyle on SNL, because he is wrong on so many levels about all the things he said about Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. It is a good and proper show, and it should live on forever. <laughs> Uh, because it is like the Phoenix in that it is reborn again every few years. So, what's up with uh, Wonders in this? How do they work? Um, it's similar to Civ Five. Uh, I personally think the Wonders are, are uh, not worth it uh, unless you're kind of, you know, invest in it from the get-go because... Um, the bonuses that they seem to do don't seem to do that great. So you you've got the gene vault. Yeah, I just built a wonder. Oh, which is that's which sort is of why I wondered. Yeah. Get it? Eh? Eh? Ah, eh? I see what you did there. So the gene oh. vault it gives you. I mean, that's actually a pretty big bonus early on is getting uh, the growth. So yeah, it's wow, nice. it's pretty sweet. Putting that oh, on great. top. I have of a your... quest to kill a worm now. Especially because <laughs> I already have that bonus once already from my faction choice, right? I was just gonna say. So you're stacked uh, with a lot of growth there. Uh, but because of the way health works, which is the happiness analog, um, you might screw yourself there. Growing too fast, too soon. But I'm such a beautiful flower, Greg. You really are. You really are a beautiful flower. It's true. I, I won't deny it. I appreciate that on your part. But I think... Um, Maybe it's just because I, I constantly get beat out on Wonders by the AI when I'm playing. Mm. And I still... You're just bitter. I still run over them like crazy. Oh, so it's not it's not doing them too much of a, a bonus. Yeah, I feel like the AI uh, has invested too much into it. Um, and uh, like I said, I don't think the bonuses are that huge. It's not like there's a, a great library or a Notre Dame or, or something that where you're like, oh my god, if you get that, that totally changes your game. Um, right. That doesn't seem to happen. Uh, with the wonders in this, but it's 
So I've noticed that some of the other uh, researches have gotten harder for me to do. When you found a new city... They become more difficult? They become more difficult. Interesting. Okay. So I just, I just ran into that as well. Um, kind of like how cult worked in a... Uh, in Civ. In Civ is like, you know, it, it increases the, the cost for um, social policies. Right. Uh, more cities increases the cost for science. In addition to the virtues. But there's virtues in, um, in the science tree which lessen some of those uh, penalties. Okay. For example, networked data links, which gives negative 40% science penalty from number of cities for new technologies. For the example. Oh, hey, I got a Lalibella. Lalibella? Lalibella, a station is near me. But also, it's, it's um, what I found is pretty interesting is that uh, the stations that pop up around you if they pop up near an alien nest, you will find yourself defending that station against the alien nest um, and the alien uh, uh, infestation if you want to keep it. Or you'll find all these derelict settlements all over the place, which is totally possible too. And yeah, Mame Dan, as you said in the... Um, uh, uh, in the chat here, uh, that the text and blurbs in the Civlopedia with the wonders, um, it's kind of neat, uh, but this is something I didn't have space to complain about in my review, but, and I don't want to necessarily compare Beyond Earth to Alpha Centauri, uh, but those, building a wonder in Alpha Centauri was so evocative with the videos that played uh, for each wonder. Um, you got a, 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 and they weren't long, and they were like, you know, 15 seconds, 30 seconds at most. And they were little snippets of storytelling and, and world building. Uh, and they were really well done, and they used the, vo the voice actors uh, to the best uh, ability. Um, and in contrast, in Beyond Earth, when you build a wonder, you get a pop up with some vo a voiceover, the same voiceover. Uh, uh, that is for the entire game, um, for all the, the the science and everything. And it just seems, and then there's like kind of a uh, wireframe um, design of the of the wonder itself and what it looks like. But other than that, it's just it's really lame. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how else to explain it. So I think they could have done a much better job if they had. Um, had those wonder uh, buildings, uh, uh, wonder movies for each one. I would have enjoyed that. And I didn't know that you had offered me something there. That's all good. And that's why we were waiting up. That's odd, because it says waiting for players. It doesn't necessarily say waiting for you. Yeah, okay. it doesn't say it's waiting for your decision on that, because I guess it's mm -hmm. a little bug with the multiplayer code. In that that sounds like a weird so answer. John, your siege worm friend, has apparently come over to say hello. Heading your way. Heading my way. I am sorry about that. Well, there are multiple siege worms, though. Yeah, well, this one's probably going to destroy me, and it's probably going to suck. I should probably take out that colonist of yours, though, John. Yeah, if you want to start that fight, you are welcome to. No. I just like to bluster. My marines are, you know, pretty close to your capital at this point. They are? Yeah. I guess you should be paying better attention to that. Really? Seeing as... I control the Isthmus? Wow, raptor bugs. I've just got all sorts of aliens hanging out by me. Yeah, you really do. You guys haven't even seen the Kraken, the Kraken yet. Don't say that. I don't want to hear that. Yeah, there's Kraken. No. It's time to get cracking. Need to get cracking on these aliens. Huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh. I don't know what that was. John and Kiefer and Josh Vanderwall are silent but deadly. They're they're probably uh, chatting covertly, building an army to murder you. 
Probably. I mean, that's what I would do. Oh, what I would. Yeah, that's what that's what I would think you would do. No, I, I'm just desperately trying to hold off aliens here. Mm-hmm. Says the guy who's trying to kill. It's him. like a, there's a little Sigourney Weaver down there saying, "Kill them! Kill them all!" <laughs> Why didn't we bring nuclear weapons? <laughs> that well, that is a good question. I did finally find some aliens. I'm gonna kill them now. <laughs> <laughs> Josh has said he is uh, strongly against uh, the aliens and the fact that they exist. Oh, hey. Hey, John. What's going on? Hey, buddy. Not the your colonist. He's just doing colonist stuff. Oh, I know. It's, it's fine. You're not... You are nowhere near territory I would like to be in right oh, now. Oh, I pissed off a worm. Oh, my God. I pissed off a worm. <laughs> what did you do that for? There's a worm chasing my guys around. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm. Tr I, I I don't want to hurt you, honest. I, I, I die. Have you seen Have you seen that uh, that ad for uh, for the baked beans where the astronauts are on the moon and all of a sudden this monster comes out of the out of the crater and just destroys them? Starts to walk away and an astronaut hiding behind a rock farts from the baked beans and the monster turns around. <laughs> yes, I have seen that. So it's like I'm desperately trying to run away and hide, but they keep following me. That just sounds like a reason not to eat baked beans. Well, yeah, that's what that was the catchphrase, not for astronauts. Get it? Oh. Astronauts. No. I don't get it. I'm uh, I'm a little thick. Can you explain that again? It's about poop. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I still don't get it. Yeah. Is there a way to view your trade routes? Yes. Uh, if you. Each city, um, this is something I discovered late. Each city, if you click on uh, the info screen for the city in the top, where it, uh, it says the, the name of the city, there's a right. couple of uh, things. One of them is a, you know, I see it. Blank out of blank. Yeah. Three out of four, and that'll that'll give you some information. But you also can learn that from the there's like a little plus symbol at the end right. of the um, bar on the bottom right. It says additional information. If you if you quit out of the city screen. Okay. You see that little plus symbol? I do. Yeah, click on that, and then there's a trade route overview. There is. Thank you very much. Which is very very important. Oh god, this is not good at all. Oh no, is a seed wor siege worm taking you out? Oh no, he's just, he's just hanging out like right on the edge of my borders, and I'm I'm hoping that I might have scared him off. I don't think I did. I'm pretty sure he's gonna he's gonna come over to wreck my stuff. Wreck my shit. Wreck my shit. Like all my guys are like half damaged from all these other aliens that have shown up to be jerks. <laughs> oh man, so I have the amazingly fun quest of fresh specimens. Kill ten alien units. Um, when I've been I've been pretty passive so far. I haven't really uh, gone after the aliens and tried to avoid attacking them because I don't want to end up like you guys. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Don't do it. Do that. Don't, don't do want to do that. Don't do it. Uh, but in the meantime, my explorer. Uh, John healthy. He has goofy voice hour. Is that what hour we're in right now? Uh, yes, we are. Okay, good to know. Everyone talking to goofy voice. Oh, uh, it's good to know. I would never talk goofy. I would talk Mickey. What? Uh, yo, yo, yo. That was terrible. Yeah, you like that? You're out of the club. You like that, guys? No. I'm out of the club. Yeah, no one liked that. Wait, number one, I didn't know there was a club. Number two, how do I... You can't... <sighs> well, that's what you get. Hey, oh, what's up, John? Alienness discovered. We're going to nip that in the bud. <laughs> I have a quest to kill a siege worm. Oh, God, there's two siege worms near me. Oh, God damn it. What did you do, Paul? What did you do? Yeah, that's some serious... What did you do, Ray? 
Jeez, I need the ultrasonic fence, like, right now. It's, like, my next technology. <laughs> Build it. Uh, guys, that was the first thing I researched and the first thing I built in my city. Just just so you know, ultrasonic fence. Wow. Wow. Josh, thank you, thank you where for that the... point of obviousness, Josh. I'm sorry I was trying to get my economy going. Why why did you declare war on me, Kiefer? Because I wanted to bring some excitement to this game. Dude, seriously, that explorer that was like my original explorer. Not anymore. Oh my god. <laughs> John Kiefer, I thought we were Brutal. friends. <laughs> Here I am. I like seriously that that explorer had 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 gone up and down all over this entire continent, this entire game. He had gotten attacked by aliens, he'd healed up, he'd avoided attack by the aliens, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go see John's territory. And the first thing you do is declare war on me and kill me. Well, it's clear that John is establishing himself as an isolationist nation, and you should not bother him. And clearly yeah. you broke that agreement. Well, you I think... Well, signs. I think I'm gonna uh, make the name of your city a reality. Oh dang! <laughs> <laughs> that got grim. Well, it's 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 funny because uh, I actually have to leave in about ten minutes. Yeah, no, we all we're all gonna end in about ten minutes. But the cool thing about multiplayer in this game is that we can save, and we'll be back. And next week, if uh, everybody uh, is available, we will be taking up the mantle again. This well, is available. to be continued. Well, I'm just saying, I hope you better agree this thing where I'm giving you free science later on when I need something. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm totally trying to save up bank so that I can do trade agreements later. All right. But right now, I'm more worried about all the horrible things that are about to happen to me with the two siege worms. Yeah, you need some ultrasonic thingamajiggers. Totally do. Ultramajigger thingamasomethings. Okay, that's weird. Why is my um, why is my camera recentering over a empty area? Um, because you declared war on me. Really? No, no, I have no idea. <laughs> oh, okay. Love that response. Um, that's... sometimes if you're moving the camera when your turn ends, that can happen. Yeah, because it's like I can't center over my uh, it's like totally recentering me now. Yeah, is it is it doing the calculations for the end oh, of the turn? Jesus. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, sometimes if it's just doing those like <laughs> those things, that that's what happens. Poor Paul. <laughs> Paul, are you dying over there? The siege worm is getting really, really physical. <laughs> stranger, stranger Bad danger. Touch. Bad touch. He totally just like took out like he he damaged one of my reams down the half with one hit, and I barely scratched him. Oh yeah. I, would, like I was not lying I when do. I everything said... Everything I can do is a major defeat. <laughs> I was not lying when they said you cannot take them on one-on-one. -on -one. And it's, you're lucky that you have Marines. If you have a, a uh, unadvanced soldier, they will kill you very fast. One shot. Goodbye. One shot, one kill. So, and that's why I've been saying I haven't been attacking those bastards, because... Hey, just... I didn't have a choice, all right? Yeah, I'd that's probably true. You know? That's probably we're, we're true. Getting all in my face. I am, surrounded, always... I am surrounded by wolf beetles. Yeah, that's pretty much... I'm, I was in Keeper situation. You know? Mm. Or I, was, I was surrounded by wolf beetles, and they were not being very nice, and they were being jerks, and, you know, being all like, hey... Stop okay, killing us. Again, round two. That's not nice. All right, so uh, as uh, Mr. Keeper avoid, uh, uh, alluded to, we will be uh, ending in about 15 minutes. Oh, come on. There's two of them right near me. Um, and, John, if you have to leave early, we can, we can end whenever. That's fine. But we've That's got fine. a pretty good session here. Uh, I am Greg Tito, editor-in-chief of The Escapist, in case those of you watching uh, have not been around for any of our introductions. I, uh, we are playing Civilization Beyond Earth. Um, it is probably a good thing for me to say that uh, 
The Escapist is owned uh, by Defy Media, which has a minority investor in Zelnik Media. Uh, and Zelnik Media is also an investor in Take Two Interactive, uh, which is owns 2K Games, which owns Firaxis Studios, who developed Civ Beyond Earth. As far as we know, Zelnik Media has no idea that The Escapist magazine exists. This stream is uh, not under their uh, approval or... Um, uh, consent and all of the opinions about this game are wholly our own but in the effort of disclosing things uh, there is a very uh, small bit of uh, investment in both of the companies that own us so there you go let it be known uh, and also um, Paul Zelnick is uh, right outside that window and he's got a gun to my head you made up that part didn't you Yes, I did. You turd. I don't even know if his name is Paul Zelnick. It could be Raoul Zelnick. Strauss, for really now. Strauss Zelnick, I think. It is. Yeah, I think you're right. It is Strauss. I've written that uh, disclosure on so many reviews. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> Read it on all of our reviews. Deal proposed. You loved it. Accepted. You I know what that means. Last. That means you're now at war with Mr. Keeper. Wait, I'm at war? I got oh. a problem with Kiefer. Oh, I am at war. Okay. No, you actually are at war with him. Yeah, I mean, if he wants to if he wants to step to this, I'll take him down. You all are screwed, okay? You are just so screwed. I didn't, I didn't even know screws. I was at war. Apparently war started. War were declared. I wonder if any of Kiefer's cities are on the coast. <laughs> no, they're not, actually. Not yet, anyway. That's too bad. I don't particularly recommend building coastal cities, uh, Kiefer. Just letting you know. FYI. Just a friendly reminder about all my naval units. Naval. Oh, stop posturing. That's actually all I'm capable of doing. I'm uh, I'm kind of a pathetic <clears> person at heart. Yeah, the naval units are, are You're not in as... second place when it comes to points, so... No, I'm not. Don't tell people that. Keep in mind that this is a space game, so naval actually probably refers to space-based. Not necessarily navy-based. Okay. Look here. No one cares. In this case, uh, the Navy is actually pretty underpowered in general uh, because of the, the lack of uh, Navy units that can take over cities. Yeah, I, I find that really interesting. There is a, um, you know, they're, they're support units. You know, they, they carry the, the, the tech jets, as they're called, when, we, when you guys start to unlock the air units. Um, and uh, they're used in you know range, range support, but that's that's about all they can do. Um, but what is cool is that eventually your units. I, I think this is true of, of no matter what Athena you go down, but your tanks and your um, artillery units start to be able to hover over uh, land and water. Okay. So you can use them uh, to attack on over the sea. I think they have a. a a penalty, but you can you can use them that way. So in effect, your land units become naval units. Uh, hey, AK four seven. Uh, it is a the little I thing here on the mini map that says toggle menu options on and off. And despite me complaining about it, I've kept these resource icons up the whole game. So. Um, you have the person in the chat, who I, I, uh, their name uh, escapes me right now, who requested that to thank for that. And uh, who are we waiting on? John, are we waiting on you? I don't think so. John, yeah. Bold, just got to me. Bolding? Bolding. Bolding. We're all locked for uh, turn order now that we're at war with each other. We yeah. Sequentially. But it looks like you and me are still highlight for, highlighted for some reason, but I don't really have any sad. other... Did you do something? Did I do something? Are you waiting on something to do? Uh, I'm choosing my actions right now. It just got to me. Ah. Oh, because it's in sequential. Yeah. Got to understand. And yes, that's true. Uh, you, Your gunboat unit um, sometimes can uh, uh, carry units too if you upgrade it the right oh, way. Oh, interesting. So it could carry an aerial unit. It can also carry... Uh, um, land units, I think, too. 
And there's some of those quest decision upgrades you do, uh, I think for an observatory, we can give plus two naval movement, um, which is a huge bonus. So all of a sudden your naval units start to like go the great seven, lighthouse. seven or eight. Uh, yeah, right, like the great lighthouse. <laughs> Two siege worms. <laughs> Are you still dealing with two siege worms over there, Paul? I killed one. Nice. But the other one has been like, oh, you killed my brother. I'm not happy about that. Killing one is good, though. So you got that huge boost from uh, getting that quest, right? I think so. My name is uh, Siege Worm Montoya. You, you killed my father. Prepare to die. All right, I guess we probably have turn, uh, uh, room for one more turn, so... Bowling. Just one more turn. Once you're done... Oh, somebody launched something. <laughs> Did you just launch a, a, an orbital unit there? No. Global thermonuclear war. Yeah. It wasn't a missile and any kind of missile at all. There's no missiles. Are you sure? You, no. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, no. It was a miasma repulsor. That is good. It, re it does miasma repulsion. Yes, I've I've launched I've launched two of those. They are super useful, especially when you have uh, bastards breathing down your throat. Saves yeah, my really, saves really my workers from having to clear it. How long do they stick around? Ten turns. Okay. It's and then nice. over the ten turns, it, it like goes out like from ones that are right underneath it to two tiles away from it. So it, right. Well, go, there goes that marine. <laughs> Uh, nice. Right. Someone in the chat says, "How about a nice game of chess?" Yeah, right. Oh. Damn it! I'm so boned. All right. You're something. Looks like that turn went pretty fast. So let's go faster here, guys. Come on, we can do it. We can get through it. That's the problem with declaring war, John. Is that it slows down the game because we can't do simultaneous turns anymore. Oh, stop whining. That's I'm not whining. I am explaining the rules of the game. Can't believe you. Okay, you're you're just you're just sore that your poor little explorer just bit the dust. He was that guy was a, a trooper, man. No, he was an explorer, okay? He'd been around for a long time. You have to upgrade to trooper. <laughs> he had been around for a long time and he'd learned was, lots of things. That was a decent joke. You're, oh. you're just you're just sorry you have to write the letter home to his parents, okay? <laughs> okay, this is getting dark. <laughs> it is true. Actually, that's the name of my World of Warcraft character is Dark, so we're good here. We're in a dark pun punny world. Yes. Hey, uh, Tito, I don't know if you've forgotten about the soldiers that you have down near one of my cities, but you probably need them for your war that you're in. The war that's that's not actually a war. It's just he killed my explorer, and that's about it. Yeah. Well, there's no. He's healing up. That's shoulders. The soldier's healing up. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be. Uh, you know, diplomatically asking for a peace pact pretty soon. I, I think we can. Um, uh, Tito, I. I think because you are my ally, I think you could heal faster if you were in my territory. Do we have open borders? Uh, if we are allies, we automatically have open borders. I. That's probably a good call. I'm just I will, I will I, test I that out as soon as it gets to me again. Um, but now I'm waiting for, for players. That's the problem. Yeah, I really like the hybrid version here of like sequential turns only uh, if you're at war. But if you are at war, man, you really can't do anything. You can't really click on the UI in any it's way. a lot of waiting, yeah. Um, which is frustrating because you can't open up. You, know, you can't even read in the tech web, you know? Did we mention that in the review? It's only in multiplayer that it becomes a real problem. Yeah. Um, and the so, you, so, so again, you're blaming me for... You just wanted to be mean and kill my explorer, but you didn't realize about the repercussions. I didn't care about the repercussions. Okay, you were in my area, you had to die. I'll talk to you for the odds. Red is dead. Have you come to help me, John, or have you come to take advantage of the siege worm destroying my city? I just kind of wanted to see how this was going for you. 
It's not pretty, is it? Oh, I didn't hear my tech web's open. All right, so um, it seems like now is a good time to call it since the it's going to take another three minutes for us to cycle through a turnaround. So um, that was really good. A lot of fun. I'm going to save it here uh, and uh, let you guys... Uh, we'll do a little recap of what's happened. I, I started as Paul Australia, uh, settling the city of Freeland um, and uh, expanded out from there. And then we realized just how large these continents were and this map was um, and uh, realized that there was going to be a long time before there was any contact with the other players. Um, so we were just mostly going to be fighting against the aliens, but I decided to explore as much as possible. You kind of see the map uh, in my route uh, as to where I was. I discovered Paul first, bolding over here, uh, and now I'm now allied with those two, right? You are. Um, by extension, I'm allied with you, Paul, even though I don't think we... you are afraid of me. Yeah, so I'm actually in a, in a great position as the traitor uh, kind of uh, faction uh, here uh, on the Isthmus. The what? The Isthmus. Excuse me? It's Christmas time. It's Isthmus. It's Isthmus time. It's Isthmus time. It's a time for miracles. And my voice is cracking, if you guys haven't noticed. So it's time really? for me to end. We're done. We're over. I'm going to save it. You guys are awesome. We're going to... Hopefully pick this up next week, uh, Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, Civilization Beyond Earth, the massive Escapist Magazine multiplayer session will continue. Uh, it's been great fun watching you guys in the chat. I'm sorry, Dan Epstein, from No Right Answer. You have to go back to work, uh, and you can't listen to us ramble anymore. Hey. Um, so thank you, guys. You guys have been great. Tomorrow um, on the screen, Tito. What's that? Did you save? Can, I, tomorrow? can I exit? I am going to save. What tomorrow. are we doing tomorrow, Tito? Tito, what are we doing tomorrow? Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow, dragons on this stream. we're going to kill things. Yeah. Um, From we are going to play Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition tomorrow, three p.m. Uh, two p.m. Eastern. Actually, we're doing it at two p.m. We're starting early, and uh, we're going to do uh, a long three-hour session with me, Paul Goodman, who is on this stream. Hello, Paul. Hello. Uh, John Bolding, who's the DM, our tabletop senior editor, uh, okay. and as well Justin Klaus, who's paying attention in the chat. Hello. And uh, so check that out. And then on Friday, uh, we haven't decided what we're going to do yet, I don't think. Um, but uh, it will be something very awesome and fun. Probably Paul getting scared and or John Bolding playing Elite Dangerous, uh, which his stream said maybe want to jump into that game and really uh, become his wing band and his hey, Huckleberry. Be my Huckleberry, Tito. Be my little. Greg, can I, uh, can I exit? Did you save? Yes, you go for it. Yay. Thank you, guys. And uh, don't forget to follow us. You'll get updates of all the things that we're doing uh, on our, our Twitch channel. And uh, follow us on Twitter as well. Ask us any questions. If you've got any questions about uh, Beyond Earth, I'd be happy to ask them, uh, answer them. Uh, and uh, just, uh, I would love to hear strategies of how I could kill John Keeper. <laughs> So, yeah, I would, I would like to hear some of being murdered by siege worms, too. That let us know all about that. You guys are great. <laughs> I'm at Greg Tito. Everybody's uh, 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 Twitter handles are um, in the tweets that I've been doing um, promoting this chat. So you, if you follow me, hey, you can follow everybody else and uh, let them know how awesome they are. Thank you guys very much. Lots of fun. We'll do this again. Bye. Later on, guys. Bye. It was fun. See ya. Bye. Thanks, John. Bye. Bye.